so uh, towards the end of our last session on kinematics i got you introduced to some basics of relative motion right i said if there is a particle a that has a velocity va <coughs> and a particle b that has a velocity vb this system could be reduced to a system in which let's say a or b could be used as an observer right that means if i choose to have a as an observer if i choose to have a as an observer a on itself will not report any velocity so if a is an observer it's as if a is pinned a is brought to rest equivalently the system could be reduced to a system in which as if say if a is an observer if a is looked upon as an observer that means a is pinned then the velocity of b as observed by a velocity of b as observed by a is said to be relative velocity of b with respect to a velocity of b with respect to a that means in a frame of reference attached to a the velocity of b reported will not be vb it will it would have to get modified it would have to get modified to the extent of minus va to vb you would have had to add minus va so if this is va if this is va va would be like this right so minus va would be a vector like this this would be a vector minus va right the resultant of these two vectors vb and minus va i mean they need not be perpendicular this vector which is velocity of b with respect to a or relative velocity of b as seen by a is what a would perceive on b right so velocity of b with respect to a that means relative velocity of b where a is an observer relative velocity of b where a is an observer is going to be velocity of b minus velocity of a where a is an observer and a would not report on b a velocity vb but the velocity of b would get modified to the extent of minus va so then <coughs> the absolute velocity of b this is the absolute velocity of b this is the relative velocity of b yes or no this is relative velocity of b this says in a loosely speaking sense absolute velocity of b is going to be given by absolute velocity of b is going to be given by relative velocity of b that means velocity of b with respect to a this is relative velocity of b plus the velocity of a which is the observer yes or no the absolute velocity of b is going to be given by relative velocity of b with respect to a plus the velocity of the observer this observer reports on b this velocity so if you add these two velocity you get the absolute velocity of b this is what you get to relative velocity if you add the velocity of the observer you get the absolute velocity of the particle yes or no right now <coughs> say we going to deal with what's referred to as river boat problems river boat problems
now <clears throat> some terminology associated with river boat problems <coughs> when they say velocity of boat in still water what it really means is what it really means is velocity of the boat as observed by the water every time they say velocity of boat in still water they actually mean velocity of boat as seen by water right that means this must be about relative velocity of boat with respect to water this must be relative velocity of boat with respect to the water or river right so velocity of boat in still water the terminology really means <coughs> relative velocity of boat with respect to water relative velocity of boat with respect to water this is what it means right say this is a river flowing we will assume for simplistic considerations the river to be flowing parallel to the shore all right hmm? and velo and velocity of boat in still water is relative velocity of boat with respect to water right also when someone says when someone says <coughs> a boat is being steered in a certain direction a boat is being steered in a certain direction that direction actually measures the direction of the relative velocity of the boat if someone says a velo a boat is being steered in a certain direction that means the steering of the boat is tilted to an extent that it would want to flow in that direction not that it actually flows in that direction it would want to float in that direction then that direction will always give you the direction of the relative velocity not the direction of the absolute velocity that means velocity with respect to the river or the water right now <coughs> say these are the two shores and say separation between the two shores is d units is d units <coughs> and <coughs> a boat starts from this point p starts from this point p and one attempts to steer the boat let's say at an angle theta in this direction one attempts to steer the boat at an angle theta in this direction then this direction will measure the relative direction of the relative velocity of the boat this direction will measure the direction of the relative velocity of the boat with respect to the river say let me call v br is velocity of boat with respect to the river velocity of boat with respect to the river and say this is the direction right this is the direction of the relative velocity and say this is the direction of the velocity of the river is the direction of the velocity of the river <coughs> the so river is the observer and what does the observer observe on the boat it observes this velocity so this is the relative velocity of the boat observed by whom by the river so if i add this velocity to this velocity what would i get 
I would get the absolute velocity of the boat. That means velocity of the boat as seen by a person on the shore. This is what it means. The velocity of the boat as seen by a stationary observer on the shore. This is what it would mean, right? So, if I add the relative velocity of the boat to the velocity of the river, I get the velocity of the boat in the shore frame of reference. This is the velocity of the boat as seen by the shore observer, as seen by a stationary shore observer, right? <coughs> so, eventually, this is the velocity of the boat with respect to the river, this is the velocity of the river and the resultant of these two will give me what? Velocity of the boat. The resultant of these two will give me the velocity of the boat. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. Right? So, for a person sitting on the shore, the even though the boat is being attempted to be steered at an angle theta like this, it would look like going along this line with respect to a person on the shore. A fixed observer on the shore would find the boat to be actually headed in this direction, to be headed in this direction. This is what it would appear, right? Now, <coughs> this is the this is the basic idea. This is really the basic idea. The idea is very simple, right? <coughs> the vertical component of VB causes displacement perpendicular to the shore. The horizontal component of VB causes the displacement of the boat parallel to the shore as observed by a shore observer. As observed by a shore observer. Yes or, or no? Right? <coughs> now, Now, <coughs> say, say this is a sure. five kilometers in width okay <clears throat> and the river the river flows say at an angle of uh, obviously horizontally uh, with a velocity of 4 kilometers per hour let us say that is the velocity of the river parallel to the shore 4 kilometers per hour right <clears throat> and it is being attempted to steer the boat. The boat has a velocity in still water equal to say 5 kilometers per hour is the velocity of the boat in still water. That means what must this measure? Relative velocity of the boat with respect to the river. Not the absolute velocity but the relative velocity of the boat with respect to the river. So velocity of boat with respect to the river has a magnitude equal to 5 kilometers per hour. Per hour right and it is being attempted to steer the boat it is being attempted to steer the boat at an angle theta, theta with respect to the perpendicular between the two shores right <coughs> okay now <coughs> the resultant of 
the relative velocity of the boat and the velocity of the observer will give me what velocity of the boat in the shore frame of reference right resultant of these two will give me the velocity of the boat in the shore frame of reference right <coughs> now in order to find the resultant of these two we could resolve these vectors perpendicular to the shore and horizontal to the shore so the relative velocity in this direction is going to be vbr cos theta and the relative velocity of the boat oh, in this direction is going to be vbr sin theta yes or no right <coughs> now suppose this was the x direction and this was the y direction if i add all these vectors vbr cos theta vbr sin theta and vr what would i get i get the absolute velocity of the boat in the shore frame of the reference shore frame of reference so in the shore frame of reference shore observer the velocity of the boat that means now the resultant of these vectors vbr and vr velocity of the boat along the x direction vx x component of the true velocity of the boat x component of the true velocity of the boat would be 4 minus vbr sin theta 4 minus vbr sin theta yeah yeah please come on 4 minus <coughs> vbr sin theta where vbr is given to be 5 say right yes or no the y component of the true velocity of the boat would be the resultant of all these vectors in this direction which is going to be vbr cos theta which is going to be vbr cos theta vbr is 5 so this is 5 cos theta yes or no right now <coughs> putting these facts in perspective can i wipe this off hmm? <coughs> effectively from the ground frame of reference or the shore frame of reference the boat starts at this point let me call it the origin let me refer to this as the x direction let me refer to this as the y direction <coughs> the boat has a vertical velocity as seen in the shore frame of reference as seen in the shore frame of reference has a vertical velocity 5 cos theta what does this velocity do it causes a drift in the y direction right and has a horizontal velocity which is 4 minus 5 sin theta what does this velocity do it causes a displacement of the boat in the x direction right <clears throat> now realize that the displacement of the boat in the x direction in t seconds in t seconds the displacement of the boat in the x direction is going to be given by what is going to be given by vx into t is the displacement of the boat in the x direction in t seconds which is 4 minus 5 sin theta into t what's the displacement of the boat in the y direction in t seconds 5 cos theta into t right under the influence of vx and vy the boat 
moves. This is the net velocity of the boat, which is the resultant of Vx and Vy. This would be the net velocity of the boat, which would be root Vx squared plus Vy squared, right? Right? <coughs> T seconds later, the boat arrives at a point, say M, that has coordinates x comma y. X comma y means by this time, the boat would have undergone an x uh, displacement x units given by that and displacement in the y direction at the behest of the vertical component of the velocity vy. This is y, right? This x is caused by vx. This y is caused by vy, where vx and vy are horizontal and vertical components of vb. vb would be root vx squared plus vy squared. <coughs> now, <coughs> eventually, when the boat reaches a certain point on the opposite shore, let's say n, hmm? when the boat the opposite shore n, a point on the opposite shore, what happens to the y displacement in the y direction? It will be d units, isn't it? On reaching this d I wrote as what, some 5 kilometers, right? So, on reaching n, what does y become? 5, right? Isn't it? Displacement in the y direction will become 5, right? So, time taken to reach n, time taken to reach n, in order to reach n, what has caused the particle to reach n? 5 cos theta, acting for how long? T seconds, right? So, 5 kilometers to be covered by Vy. 5 kilometers to be covered by Vy. How long will it take? 5 divided by Vy? 5 divided by Vy. Vy, right? So, time taken is going to be 5 divided by Vy, which is 1 by cos theta. Yes or no? Now, when would this time be the least? If you want the particle to reach a certain point on the opposite shore in the least possible time and you are allowed to vary theta, then this theta, cos theta should be 1 for Tn to be the least. Cos theta should be 1 for Tn to be the least, right? That means theta must be 0 degrees, that means he must attempt to steer perpendicular to the shore. He would attempt to steer in this direction, in this direction. Theta is 0 degrees is this direction. So, if he attempts to steer in this direction, he will reach a certain point on the opposite shore in the least possible time, in the least possible time. Clear? Now, <coughs> Suppose, <coughs> this is where the boat starts, under the influence of a Vx which is this and Vy which is this and you want n to be a point here. Let us say you want the particle, the boat to reach this point n prime. Now, in order that it can reach n prime, realize that its drift in the horizontal direction must be 0 x must be 0, yes or no, right? To reach n prime, x must be 0, right? In order to reach n prime, x must be 0, right? <coughs> so, if x is 0, that means 4 minus 5 sin theta must be 0, Or that means he must attempt to steer the boat at an angle theta with respect to the vertical such that sin theta is 4 by 5. Right? So, if 
if he tries to drive the boat at an angle theta with respect to this vertical direction such that sin theta is 4 by 5 then the horizon the velocity of the river in this direction and the horizontal velocity of the relative velocity in this direction will cancel off therefore there would be no drift in the x direction vx will become 0 if vx is 0 the particle will still move just vertically vertically it will not get drifted parallel to the river right <coughs> Huh? I'll explain. Look. This is the relative velocity of the boat, which is 5 kilometers per hour like this. This is the velocity of the river, which is 4 kilometers per hour like this. And he's attempting to steer at an angle theta. This is not the absolute velocity, this is the relative velocity. If to this velocity I add this velocity, I get the absolute velocity, right? So now, the resultant of these two vectors is a vector 5 cos theta like this and is a vector 4 minus 5 sin theta, right? Clear? This causes vertical drift, this causes horizontal drift. This is the velocity in the x direction, it will cause drift in the x direction. So if this velocity becomes 0, there would be no drift in the x direction. It will only drift vertically. That means when 4 is 5 sin theta, that means if sin theta is 4 by 5, it will not drift horizontally. It will reach a point on the opposite shore. Right? Let me change this situation a little bit. So far, so good, right? Yes, sir. Hmm? <coughs> so, for least drift in the x direction, sine theta is 4 by 5, drift in the x direction will become 0, right? <coughs> Let me change the numbers a little bit here, okay? So the least drift in the x direction would occur if he attempts to steer at an angle sin theta equal to 4 by 5. May not always be the same set of dynamics. See how things change if I slightly alter these numbers. Okay. Say, Again, this time the river, the river moves, let us say to the right with a velocity of 5 kilometers per hour, okay. Hmm? And you attempt to steer the boat at an angle theta such that so VBR is 4 kilometers per hour. VBR is 4 kilometers per hour. So this is what you try to do here. Hmm? And again resultant of these two relative velocity of boat and velocity of river will give me the Velocity of the boat in the shore frame of reference, in the shore frame of reference, okay. So, its vertical component 4 cos theta. Horizontal component, resultant of these two will give me the horizontal component of the true velocity of the board, which means 5 minus 4 sin theta. And say, D is the width of the river. 
now he starts from this point say p question is and these are now the true velocities in the x and the y direction so they would measure the true displacements with respect to this fixed point along the x and the y directions yes or no <coughs> now if he has to reach let's say a point q on the opposite shore like this in order to reach q the displacement in the x direction must be zero and first of all how long does he take to reach a point on the opposite shore so time taken to reach a point on the opposite shore any point to reach a point on the opposite shore what's the vertical displacement d to reach any point on the vertical shore on the opposite shore the displacement vertically must be d and what causes d vy causes d vy causes d right so time taken to reach a point on the opposite shore is going to be d divided by vy right hmm? <coughs> now in this time you want the particle to have zero drift in the x direction to have a zero drift in the x direction that means in order that it reaches q x is zero on reaching q but to have zero drift in the x direction velocity in the x direction must be zero right but this time can vx be zero that's the question that means vx is zero will give me equal to five by four boom 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 is it possible that means what if this is not possible he cannot reach this point on the opposite shore no matter what theta because irrespective of theta sin theta cannot exceed one right see i just changed the numbers four five became five four that's all right but this time no matter what angle he tries it will all be in vain he will never be able to reach the point on the opposite shore yes yes so if the velocity of river is more than the velocity of the boat with respect to the river if the velocity of river is more than the velocity of boat with respect to the river he will never be able to reach a point on the opposite shore irrespective of the angle theta that he tries right he will always get drifted horizontally clear yes or no <coughs> now <coughs> so this is not possible but nevertheless he will still reach some point on the opposite shore right say <coughs> he reaches a point q prime on the opposite shore and to reach q prime on the opposite shore this must be the time taken this must be the time taken to reach a point on the opposite shore vertical displacement is d at the rate of vy meters per second so time taken to reach q prime would be d divided by vy yes or no right <coughs> d divided by vy now in this time let's say the displacement horizontally is x this displacement the horizontal drift is x and what causes x x is caused by vx acting for how long acting for these many seconds x is caused by x drift in the x direction x is caused by vx acting for these many seconds because this is the time to re reach q prime yes or no yes, right <coughs> so the x of q x of q prime that is is going to be vx which is 5 minus 4 sin theta acting for how long d by 4 cos theta seconds yes or no yes sir hmm? <clears throat> now so far so good right so far so good <clears throat> no confusion hmm? now if i change theta then x will change horizontal drift will change right you know this fellow this boatman is a smuggler 
he has a treasure here but unfortunately he tried hard he couldn't reach this point directly couldn't reach this point directly in this situation couldn't reach this point the earlier smuggler did <laughs> right this one couldn't so so now he is in a rush to reach this point if he is in a rush to reach this point this x must be minimized he must then have a choice of theta such that this x becomes the least it could be yes or no in order that he can quickly grab the treasure here and escape to glory right so which means now he needs to decide the value of theta such that x is the least it could be he doesn't know trigonometry otherwise why would he be a smuggler <laughs> right so he comes to you iit je aspirants he says okay tell me the value of theta so that this x is least i will give you 0.00005 into 10 to the power minus 5% of these treasure that is there which also is huge <laughs> percentage theek aata hai <laughs> okay <laughs> nahi nahi loss of indices wagera seekh liya tha trigo nahi by the time it came to trigo he became a smuggler <laughs> mega city ka <laughs> <laughs> all right so he needs to work out a value of theta such that this x is the least it could be clear hmm so we can help the smuggler out <coughs> and report to the police <laughs> so for x equal to x least <coughs> we want to select theta that means now what is our x x is 5 <coughs> sec theta minus 4 tan theta into d divided by 4 this has to be the least now for this to be the least 5 sec theta minus 4 tan theta has to be the least right this has to be the least hmm let me call it k let me call it k and find the least value of k let me call this k and find the least value of k for different thetas right a certain theta will give me the minimum value of k yes or no hmm Five minus four sine theta is k cos theta on multiplying by cos theta throughout. Five minus four sine theta is k cos theta. Hmm. <coughs> Or five equal to k cos theta plus four sine theta. Yes or no? Hmm? Hey, re recall trigonometry: a cos theta plus b sine theta is always less than or equal to root a square plus b square. Yes or no? Hmm? A sine theta plus b cos theta. This will always be less than or equal to root k square plus sixteen. A squared plus B squared, yes or no? Yes. Right, such must be theta. Such must be k. So far, so good. Yes or no? Hmm. <coughs> Which means. <coughs> k squared plus 16 must be greater than or equal to 25 k 
k is a positive number k squared therefore must be greater than or equal to 9 or k must be greater than or equal to 3 k is a positive number right which means what is k minimum k minimum must be 3 yes or no Right? So we've been able to find the minimum value of 5 sec theta minus 4 tan theta that turns out to be k equal to 3. Right? k turns out to be 3. <coughs> now, a cos theta, dis it's the drift in the x direction, isn't it? It's positive only, isn't it? <coughs> so, <coughs> our x was x was like a 5 sec theta minus 4 tan theta into d by 4. That was our x. x would be least when this is 3. Yes or no? This, this was k. This turns out to be 3. x would be x least when 5 sec theta minus 4 tan theta is k minimum which is 3 yes or no hmm? or I end up getting 5 sec theta let me obtain theta for which this becomes 3 let me obtain the value of theta for which this becomes 3 <coughs> 5 sec theta whole squared is 3 plus 4 tan theta whole squared hmm? or 25 sec squared theta which is like 1 plus tan squared theta equals 9 plus 24 tan theta plus 16 tan squared theta yes or no <coughs> or 9 tan squared theta minus 24 tan theta plus 16 is 0 hmm? or we have like this is a perfect square as you can see 3 tan theta minus 4 whole squared is 0 yes or no this is 3 tan theta minus 4 whole squared right so this gives me tan theta equal to 4 by 3 such must be theta tan theta equal to 4 by 3 such must be theta yeah same tone same person we will we'll handle that later. So, if you if he attempts to drift at an angle theta such that tan theta is 4 by 3, then he would reach a point on the opposite shore uh, very close to the opposite point, very close to the opposite point. Clear? Drift in the x direction would be the least for such a value of theta. Clear? Now, <coughs> This was the river boat issue. <coughs> now, a little bit again, you know the same idea. <coughs> a little bit now on uh, the <coughs> umbrella rain problems, umbrella rain problems, you know, very similar stuff. So, see if there is a man moving along the road 
with the velocity of vm right <coughs> and rain falls with a velocity vr this is the true velocity of the rain this is the velocity of the man right but the velocity of man if he if the man was stationary this is the velocity that he would observe of the rain but the man is moving so the man observe a velo observes a velocity velocity of the rain as seen by the man is going to be velocity of rain minus velocity of man this is what the man would perceive on rain right that means <coughs> to the velocity of rain if you add negative of the velocity of man to add negative of the velocity of the man this is the velocity of rain to it you add minus vm if vm is like this minus vm would be like this this would be minus vm and then the resultant of these two vectors would give me velocity of rain with respect to the man <coughs> resultant of these two using triangle law vectors is going to be this this is velocity of rain with respect to the man velocity of rain with respect to the man is like this the resultant of these two vectors yes or no right <clears throat> that means now the manner in which he must hold the umbrella is so as to counter what he is perceiving he has to hold the umbrella like this along this line so that he he gets protection from the rain right in order to get protection from the rain he must hold the umbrella like this so that he gets velocity of rain with respect to the man that is how he must now of course while uh, protecting himself from the rain if he starts to do this calculation first <laughs> then he's gone right <laughs> <laughs> now let me illustrate a few problems to you you know there is a sheet titled sheet 1 kinematics sheet 1 <coughs> look at problem 7 look at problem 7 to a man walking at the rate of 2 kilometers per hour there is a man walking at the rate of 2 kilometers per hour this is kinematics sheet 1 velocity of man is 2 kilometers per hour let's say to the right rain appears to fall vertically that means the relative velocity of rain is vertical appears means what appears to the man what appears to the man is relative velocity of rain with respect to the man right so velocity of rain with respect to the man is like this velocity of rain with respect to the man is like this this is the direction of the velocity of rain with respect to the man <coughs> <coughs> that means look if velocity of rain with respect to the man is added to the velocity of the man this is the relative velocity of rain this is the velocity of the observer the man is the observer what would you get you get the true velocity of the rain yes or no isn't it so this is the relative velocity of rain this is the velocity of the observer if i add these two what would i get true velocity of rain right that means the true velocity of rain from triangle law vectors would be this this would be the true velocity of rain yes or no clear now even if the velocity of man changes the true velocity of rain will remain like this only right now the next part is <clears throat> he doubles his speed he doubles his speed 
on doubling the speed that means when this becomes 4 kilometers per hour velocity of rain will not change but velocity of rain with respect to the man will change if the velocity of the observer changes the relative velocity of rain will change yes or no so this time he is doubling his own velocity his velocity is becoming 4 kilometers per hour velocity of rain will not change but relative velocity of rain with respect to the man will change and it's given that when he doubles his speed to 4 kilometers per hour rain appears to meet him at an angle 45 degrees right which means <coughs> what i do is this is velocity of rain with respect to the man see it's it's about time you learnt how to be effective in drawing your velocity diagrams okay this is 2 kilometers per hour hmm. i add another 2 units length to this vector say this was velocity of man this length was 2 kilometers per hour i add another 2 kilometers speed marker this ab the vector ab represented 2 kilometers per hour the original velocity of man and say cb represented 4 kilometers per hour i have added another 2 kilometers of vectors right cb represented as final velocity vector yes or no c ab which was his original velocity vector 2 kilometers per hour cb which was his final velocity which is 4 kilometers per hour yes or no i hope you understand what i have done right so now the new velocity of the man is cb velocity of rain is this yes or no yes. Hmm? would you then not realize that the new velocity of rain with respect to the man is going to be like this this is the new velocity of rain with respect to the man because this velocity plus this velocity this is velocity or new velocity of rain with respect to the man this is the velocity of the man new velocity of the man 4 kilometers per hour the resultant of these two must give me velocity of rain yes or no so this would give me the new velocity of rain with respect to the man new velocity of rain with respect to the man and that's known to be at an angle of 45 degrees with the vertical that means rain appears to fall now at an angle of 45 degrees with the vertical i hope all of you understand this hmm this is the new velocity of man rain now seems to be falling like this at an angle 45 degrees with the vertical so new velocity of rain with respect to the man plus velocity of man will still give me the old velocity of rain yes or no yes, hmm? now i need to calculate vr the physics is done ordinary mathematics is left here to be taken care of this length is 2 units so now this length will also be 2 units why 45 degrees 90 degrees so if this is 2 units this must also be 2 units this is 2 units and therefore this vr must be 2 root 2 units yes or no so the velocity of the rain is 2 root 2 kilometers per hour and if this is 2 this is 2 can you tell me what must this angle be 45 degrees this angle must be 45 degrees so the true velocity of the rain is 2 root 2 kilometers per hour making an angle 45 degrees with the vertical making an angle 45 degrees with the vertical yes or no Make sure you understand this right now. You know these velocity diagrams. Effectively drawing these velocity diagrams is important to know. Okay. Let me <coughs> illustrate another problem so that you know it's very similar problem. But so 
Sorry? Where? Okay. You take this 45 degrees, so this will also turn out to be 45 degrees? Okay, then of course there would be ambiguity, then they would say, in this case it didn't matter. Right? That's why I'll give you another problem in which you know your ambiguity will get clarified. Then they would have to say if it's with respect to horizontal or vertical. Since it was 45 degrees, there was, yeah, there was no issues. Let me look at problem 16, which is a very similar problem, just different numbers. I want you to get used to the velocity diagram in these umbrella rain problems, right? <coughs> <laughs> Number 16. When a car is moving at 45 kilometers per hour on a level road, this is 45 kilometers per hour, this length is 45 units. I mean, the length of a vector is proportional to its magnitude, isn't it? This is, this is how we represent vectors, right? It doesn't mean that this length is 45. It means this length is proportional to 45 kilometers per hour. <coughs> the raindrops appear to hit the windshield at an angle 45 degrees with the vertical. See, Shramana, this time it's given with the vertical. So there is no ambiguity. <coughs> so if the car moves like this, raindrops this is seem to move seem to hit the windshield that means this is this must be the direction of the relative velocity this must be the direction of the relative velocity and that's known to be 45 degrees with the vertical 45 degrees with the vertical this is the relative velocity of rain with respect to the car raindrops seem to be hitting at an angle 45 degrees with the vertical. Seem to be means it must be relative velocity of rain with respect to the car. This is the velocity of the car, 45 kilometers per hour. Right? <coughs> now, he increases his speed when the speed of the car is increased to 60 kilometers per hour. The uh, this angle becomes 60 degrees. Okay, first of all, this is the velocity of rain with respect to the car. This is the velocity of the car. If I add the relative velocity of rain to the velocity of the observer, what would I get? The true velocity of rain, right. So, for sure, from triangle law, this must be the velocity of rain. This must be the velocity of rain. Velocity of rain with respect to the car plus velocity of car which is 45 like this, the resultant of these two vectors must be this vector, must, must be the true velocity of rain. Right? Now, the speed is increased to 60 kilometers per hour. That means to this vector, I will add another 15 units. Let me add it in this direction. Velocity of rain will remain the same. Velocity of car will become now 60. Add another 15 units to this vector. That means now this becomes the new velocity of the car. This becomes the new velocity of the car, 60 kilometers per hour, with 15 appended to 45. Yes or no? Right? The relative velocity of rain now 
this is the new ve relative velocity of rain with respect to the car and this angle instead of 45 degrees will become 60 degrees that means this is 40 15 degrees yes or no yes. the new angle becomes <coughs> 60 degrees <coughs> yes or no yes. right now now <coughs> i want to be able to find the velocity of rain given this data i want to be able to find the velocity of rain again this is the old relative velocity of rain with respect to the car plus velocity of car will be velocity of rain this is the new velocity of the car 60 kilometers per hour this is the new relative velocity of rain so to relative velocity of rain if i add velocity of car i get the velocity of rain which is the same which is not going to change right now i want to be able to calculate vr i want to be able to calculate vr <coughs> So it's, a, it's now about very ordinary trigonometry, very ordinary algebra now. Say this length is A units. This length is A units. Then this length must also be A units. Yes or no? say this length is b units <coughs> then very clearly a plus b is 45 right <coughs> and 15 plus a divided by a would be tan 60 degrees <laughs> 15 plus a divided by a is tan 60 degrees which is a root 3 yes or no yes, sir. so you can obtain a from these considerations plug in the value of a and you can obtain b from these considerations Yes or no? Right? One could solve for A and B readily from these considerations. Now, once you know A and B, then the problem is done. Because if you know A and B, Vr would be root A squared plus B squared. Do you see that? Vr would be root A squared plus B squared. Right? And Vr would make, a, make an angle theta with the vertical would make an angle theta with the vertical such that tan theta is going to be b by a yes or no you comprehend this velocity diagram properly it's just like using triangle law vectors properly but uh, drawing your velocity diagrams aesthetically that's all Clear? Mm. Yes. Yes. Clear? Now, <coughs> see another situation related to relative velocities <coughs> say there is a particle a and its position vector is r1 there is a particle a at time t equal to 0 its position vector is r1 right and it has a velocity v1 like this there's a particle b which at time t equal to 0 has position vector r2 
R1 and R2 are known. Hmm? And let us say velocity of B is V2 like this. Hmm. I want to know if the two particles will collide or not. Assuming they move with constant velocities, I want to know if particles A and B ever collide. right? So, I want to figure out whether A and B ever collide. This is what I am seeking to find, whether the two particles A and B would ever collide. Now, let me reduce this to an equivalent relative velocity problem. Let me reduce this to an equivalent relative velocity problem, right? Where say I make A the observer, I make A the observer. So, if I make A the observer, then the velocity of B would be Vb minus Va. Yes or no? That would be the revised velocity of B. Vb minus Va. <coughs> So, if A is chosen as an observer, this is an equivalent situation, equivalent situation, A is an observer, then the velocity of B will no longer be V2, it is going to be V2 minus V1. See, V1 was like this, so minus V1 would be like this. Yes or no? See, this was V1. This was V1. So, minus V1 would be this vector? Yes, yes or no? <clears throat> so, V2 plus minus V1 would be the velocity of B with respect to A. A. Yes or no? Yes. Right? So, velocity of B as seen by A is velocity of B minus velocity of A. Yes or no? So, A, if you imagine it to be fixed, the velocity of B then would be modified to the tune of minus V1. V2 minus V1 would be the revised velocity of B. Right? Now, no, 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 no. So, imagine that A is at rest. Imagine that A is at rest. Then B has a velocity which is the resultant of V2 and minus V1. <coughs> hmm. This is V2. This is minus V1. The resultant of these two velocities would be this, which is V2 plus minus v1 which is velocity of b as seen by a it's as if a is fixed and b is moving with this velocity now it's as if a is fixed and b moves with this velocity so if a is fixed and b has a velocity then do you realize that if this velocity is directed from b to a b will collide with a yes or no that means what we need is what we need is Velocity of B with respect to A must be along B A. Velocity of B with respect to A must be along B A. This resultant must be along B A so that B A eventually bumps into A. Yes or no? That means V B A which is like V2 and minus V A resultant of V2 and minus V1. What is this vector B A? This vector B A is actually final position minus initial position, final position vector minus initial position vector, that is R1 minus R2. Do you realize that R1 minus R2 must be parallel to VBA? R1 minus R2, this vector must be parallel to VBA, right, for them to collide. So, R1 minus R2 <coughs> must be parallel to VBA. If these are parallel, that means a unit vector in this direction must be the same as a unit vector in this direction, right? So, first of all, R1 minus R2 must be parallel to VBA. 
that means VBA is V2 minus V1. That means a unit vector in this direction must be the same as unit vector in this direction. If two vectors are parallel, then a unit vector in this direction must be the same as a unit vector in this direction. Yes or no? That means <coughs> R1 minus R2 by mod R1 minus R2. That's a unit vector in this direction. That must be the same as a unit vector in the direction governed by V2 minus V1. Unit vector along V2 minus V1 is like V2 minus V1 divided by mod V2 minus V1. So if the four vectors R1, R2, V1, V2 are related by this condition, then the two particles must collide. Then the two particles must collide. Yes. Yes or no? Hmm? Let's let's also handle this problem without deploying relative velocity notion, right? Relative velocity is only a tool that we have learned so that we could effectively use it. But doesn't mean that uh, you should be handicapped in absence of this tool because everything goes down, percolates down uh, to the basics, right? Same first principles. So you should never feel handicapped uh, in the event you don't know a tool because you could still go from first principles and solve the problem. Right? So let's solve this problem using first principles without deploying the relative velocity notion at all. Clear? We'll find the same condition, condition for which the two particles will collide. Clear? <coughs> particle A with position vector R1 moves with velocity V1 particle B at the same instant of time with position vector R2 moves with velocity V2 right <coughs> now if they have to collide, say they collide at a certain point P, they collide at a certain point P T seconds later, T seconds later they collide at a certain point P, the two particles and let us say the position vector of this point is R, R is the position vector of this point, right? <coughs> Now, A must have moved in this direction for t seconds. A must have moved in this direction with the velocity v1 for t seconds. So, that means this displacement, first of all, this is r1, this position vector is r2. This vector must be v1 t, this vector must be v1 t, yes or no? Similarly, B moves with the velocity v2 for t seconds in this direction. So, this vector must be v2t. Don't do it. <coughs> yes or no? Right? <coughs> now, do you realize r minus r1 is v1t? This vector is what? Final position r minus initial position R1. R minus R1 is V1T, right? R minus R2 is V2T, where T is a scalar, T is a scalar. Yes or no? 
right? If I subtract these two to eliminate R, then what do I get? I end up getting R2 minus R1 equals V1 minus V2 into T. Where T is a scalar? That means if a vector A is k times a vector B, then A and B must be parallel vectors. If k is a positive scalar, if A is k times B, A and B must be parallel vectors. So this is a vector A, this is a vector B, this is a scalar k. So A is k times B, that means A must, and B must be parallel vectors. So which means R2 minus R1 must be parallel to V1 minus V2. If these two vectors are parallel, then unit vectors in their direction in, in, in the direction of these vectors must be the same. Right. So this would mean R2 <coughs> minus R1 by mod R2 minus R1 must be V1 minus V2 mod V1 minus V2. That's the condition for the two particles to collide. Clear? All's good? Yes, sir. Hmm? <coughs> now, Suppose <coughs> this is the origin of coordinates and there is a particle moving in this direction with a velocity of say 10 kilometers per hour. right and there is a particle p which is say <coughs> 10 kilometers initially this is at time t equal to 0 this is also time t equal to 0 which is 10 kilometers from o and say is moving in this direction with a <coughs> this is 10 kilometers distance between O and P 10 kilometers and there is this particle at time t equal to 0 which is moving in this direction with a velocity of say 10 kilometers per hour. Right. Hmm. Now t seconds later O would have gone to O prime say t hours later, say t hours later, this would have covered a distance 10t, this would have covered a distance 10t kilometers in t hours, right? Whereas this particle p would have gone from p to p prime and it would have covered 10t kilometers in this direction. <coughs> so, t hours later, P is here and O is there, right? And very clearly, again as you can see, this distance is going to be 10 kilometers, which was originally known, minus 10 T. So, this is going to be 10 minus 10 T. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? This then is the new separation between the two particles. This is the new separation between the two particles t hours later and what is s squared? s squared is going to be 10 t whole squared plus 10 minus 10 t whole squared. 
that's a separation between the two particles t hours later right as t changes with the passage of time the separation between the two particles will change with time right i now want to find out a value of t i now want to be able to find out a value of t for which s is separation between the two particles is the least you know what i'm saying to find t for which s is s least the separation between the two particles is the least it could be clear now one thing <clears throat> i could use algebraic manipulation here and find t could use calculus and find t for which s square is the least but i will not do all that i am going to take recourse to reducing this problem to an equivalent relative velocity problem and solve this problem in the relative velocity domain we want to find the time in which the separation between the two particles becomes the least and what's the least separation that's possible what is the least s square what is the least s between the two particles during this journey clear now so you've understood the problem right now let's reduce this problem to an equivalent problem clear <clears throat> let me look upon o as an observer o is fixed hmm? then the velocity of p would have to be modified velocity of p would be velocity of p minus velocity of o then yes or no right so <clears throat> i pin this observer o then p would have a revised velocity it will no longer be vp it will be vp minus vo vp is 10 kilometers per hour like this to the velocity of p i must add negative of the velocity of o velocity of o is like this 10 kilometers per hour like leftwards but negative of the velocity of o would be 10 kilometers per hour rightwards right so this would be negative of the velocity of o which would be 10 kilometers per hour to the right yes or no so to the velocity of p if i add negative of the velocity of o i would get velocity of p with respect to o with respect to o means it's as if o is an observer it's as if o is pinned and fixed and it's as if p now has a velocity governed by the resultant of these two such would be the velocity of p yes or no hmm. so velocity of p then would be like this p would move in this direction p would therefore move in this direction and the velocity of p as seen by o this is 10 this is 10 this is going to be 10 root 2 10 root 2 kilometers per hour would be the velocity of p and this angle would be 45 degrees as you can see so p would now as seen by o move with the velocity of 10 root 2 kilometers per hour making an angle 45 degrees as shown how about it right now hmm? so <clears throat> p has a velocity in this direction a velocity of 10 root 2 kilometers per hour going this way hmm o is fixed that's a equivalent problem right it's as if o is fixed and p is moving with a velocity of 10 root 2 kilometers per hour along this direction at an angle of 45 degrees as shown what do you say hmm make sense to all of you now if p moves in this direction and o is fixed then during this journey of p do you realize that this would be the shortest distance between o and p perpendicular distance this will be the shortest distance between o and p yes or no om would be the shortest distance between o and p the perpendicular distance isn't it 
right now huh? and this we know is 10 kilometers see this is 10 kilometers op is 10 kilometers then do you realize that om is going to be 10 sin 45 degrees 10 sin 45 degrees right yes, yes. so om shortest distance is going to be 10 sin 45 degrees which is like a 10 by root 2 kilometers that's the shortest distance yes or no right hmm? now let us say the time taken to reach the shortest distance t, hmm? <coughs> realize that the velocity of p in this direction is what 10 root 2 kilometers per hour and what is this length? This length is 10 root 2 kilometers, is not it 10 by root 2, 10 cos 45 degrees, is not it? Pm is 10 cos 45 degrees. which is like a 10 by root 2 kilometers and this distance, this distance is covered at the rate of 10 root 2 kilometers per hour, yes or no? This distance is covered at the rate of 10 root 2 kilometers per hour, so the time taken to cover PM 10 by root 2 at the rate of 10 root 2 kilometers per hour would be these many hours, yes or no? Half an hour, 30 minutes is what you get in this time the distance between them attained is going to be the shortest possible <coughs> clear confused or all right hmm? Stand by. 